Hi, I'm Katrin. Welcome to my channel. My passion is storytelling and that is what you find on my channel. I do the overall story of Margit Sandemos book series, The Legend of the Ice People. It's a fantastic family saga which extends over several centuries. That is what I'm going to look into in my video today. Every book in the story stands on its own. You can come into the story anytime. So far we have followed Sol's journey from the Lindali to Copenhagen in Denmark. Many things happened during her stay there. She found a missing child. She went on a secret meeting, which turned out to be a disappointment for her. But she took the chance to practice some witchcraft on them. She started working and then just before she was about to go back to Norway, she was accused of being a witch. So now she is on the run. Her landlords, Count and Countess Strathelheim, helped her escape by sending her with the king's men to Skåne. From there she would take the boat to Norway. But Sol is not in a hurry. She plans to visit the hills of Brösarp, the place Hanna had told her about. The first night in Skåne they made camp. When they were asleep they got attacked and Sol kidnapped. Jakob Skille came to her rescue. Jürgen was injured and they need to find help for him. They turned south again and found a little village. A farmer and his family promised to take care of him, while Skille went to the house of Glimming and Sol to the hills of Brösarp. It was still night and when the rain started to pour down, they made a stop at the boat house by the shore. During the night under the davet, things start to happen. Skille mixed his dreams with a present and Sol was awake and let things happen. The next day they continued their journey. Skille took the road to the house of Glimminge and Sol the road to hills of Brösarp. They agreed to meet here in a few days. Sol found the place she was looking for, but the witches were gone. It was about sixty years since they changed place for their meetings. Sol got the direction from the old couple and is now out looking for the place. She is also looking for the herb, black nightshade, that she needs for her trip to Blåkulla. Back home in Norway, Liv have married Lawrence Berenius. Liv realized almost immediately that this marriage will not be a happy one. Every day it gets worse and worse. Today I will continue with Leaves life in Oslo. While Sol wandered around in the spring green beech forest, Liv stood by the window in her fancy merchant house and looked out at the slush on the streets of Oslo. Heavy rain falls. The weight in her chest did not want to let her go, nor did the discouragement in her heart. Restless, she nervously drummed on the window sill. If only she had something to do. But whatever she did, the burden of her conscience increased in the anxiety in her. Was she allowed to do this? Should a wife do that? Or this? How could she even learn, she who was brought up, to help in an atmosphere of love and selflessness? to always think about the happiness of others, to make sure they were happy. Here she got cursed if she helped in the wrong way and if she did not help in the right way. But what was the right way and what was the wrong way? It was different day after day. How were they at the Lindali now? It should have rained there too. When it rained, it dripped from the trees in the alley, and a small stream of water formed and flooded through the alley. And in the courtyard, there was a pool of water right where you stepped down from the stairs. 
Father have always intended to do something about it, but when the rain stopped, he forgot it again. It will probably be Are, who will eventually drain in front of the stairs. The other siblings were in Denmark. Soon they will both come home. But she would not go home. She have left the Lindale and Greystone home forever, and Lawrence always rejected her suggestion to travel and visit them, saying that he did not have time right now. And by the way, you should not be there too often, he used to say. Those weird people. And Charlotte Maiden is a scandal for her position, as radical as she are, an unmarried mother and all. Leave knew that Lawrence thought that Charlotte should have been punished with a pillory, as all single mothers became, and everyone, even the father of the child, could spit on them or throw stones at them. Charlotte had escaped it, and Lawrence was not happy about that. Such laziness contributed to the general decay. Leave could not imagine the kind-hearted and friendly Charlotte in the pillory. Lawrence did not know about that dog once was put out in the forest to die. She neither dared nor wanted to tell him that. Yes, your father makes good money, so I can accept him, Lawrence continued. He always spoke in the same contemptuous tone when he talking about her family. But he is weird, you must agree with that, right? And you can barely look at him. Leave have always seen her father as one of the most beautiful people on earth. No one had such loving eyes than him. Your brother R is also rather good. At least he talks about things you can understand, even if he's just a farmer. And your mother, she's always too radical too, isn't she? She goes out without anything that covers her hair, as if she lives in sin with your father. It is after her that you have inherited your carelessness in the household, isn't it? And the stupid ideas about painting. Leave him never dared to reveal that silly was Master Ingram, who Lawrence admired so much and wanted a wallpaper from, but never received because Master Arngrim had so many orders. And the carelessness in the household Leave did not understand that. At home it was always said that she, unlike her mother, was a perfect housewife. But here she had other duties than home. Here she would administer, command over the servants, or just be there if Lawrence or his mother needed her help. Leave did not like to command the servant. At home they have talked kindly to them and helped in the kitchen if needed. Everything was so different here. Lawrence was surprisingly insecure about Sewell. She knew that. He was fascinated by her charm but was frightened by her strong personality and self-confidence and that she did not show him any interest or admiration. He had said several nasty things about her, too. Lawrence had never seen Dog. Leave wonders what fault he would find in him. Her mother-in-law was taking a nap. This was the best time of the whole day. Leave's half hour. But now she had become so nervous and stressed that she could not relax any more. The rain was pouring down on the window sill. A housemaid came into the room and Leva walked away from the window. She picked up a little thing on the sideboard, pretended that she had something to do. Far away from Leva down in Skåne as Sol held the horse. Tall harp, wouldn't she be there soon? She got a nasty feeling that she have gotten lost. Mwah. She did not have time for that. 
She rode for a while without seeing a single trace of buildings. No one to ask, and time passed. From the strongly hilled terrain, she understood that she was around Linderödsåsen, but what did that help her? She did not know anything about Linderödsåsen. What she was looking for was Tollarp, or a river that would flow through the village. But she had not seen anyone. Was no one living here in this part of Skåne? And if she did not find it, she could end up where Göingarna ruled. Sweden was not far away. Ha! Oh, what if she was in Sweden already? No, she couldn't be. As she mumbled about how lonely it was here, she heard distant voices. She followed the sound and soon after the forest opened and an oak-covered hill appeared. She could see a large group of soldiers standing by a fence. The spring sun was shining and she could hear the wicked laughter. Sol was not afraid of them and they have no horses so they could not follow her. Still she stopped at the edge of the forest. What in the world were they doing? A fierce blush of disgust washed over her face. She backed the horse a few steps back into the dark forest. They had a woman there, and now they were about to having fun with her. Sol swore between her teeth. They were probably twelve or thirteen of them. She could not see much of the woman, but she heard her cry. Sol picked up her long gold chain from her bag and hung it around her neck. She also had a beautiful hat with her, which she also put on. She tied up her hair and hid it under the hat. Then she sat down, as ladies should do, with both feet in one direction. Immediately, the wild and cheerful young woman was transformed into a dignified, noble lady. She rode forward. Stop! she shouted it to the man who was leaning over the woman. Everyone looked surprised when they turned around. Release her, you wicked little man, she was angry. She did not realize how grand and impressive she was. The soldiers looked at her with their mouth open. One soldier managed to recover from the surprise. What are you, captain, you who do not speak our language? When it comes to language in Norway, Denmark and Sweden, it is remarkably similar and we understand each other, more or less. Get off the horse, continued the soldier. Then you can taste the same medicine. Never in my life, she said cold as ice. You are way too ugly. Sol was careful not to get too close. Up on the horse, she was safe. If you don't release her immediately, you will be unhappy for the rest of your life. She said it slowly with her yellow-green eyes half-closed. Several of them hesitated because she seemed to be of noble birth and she could gossip. But the man who was ready and approaching the unhappy woman grinned. Do you think you can stop me? Yes. The simple statement took him out of control for a moment, but then he turned around and approached the woman. He turned his back on Sol. Oh, what then? How can you stop me? You cannot, said Sol, Sol with a smooth voice. You cannot. Your male power have left you. Everyone laughed out loud, and the one who laughed the most was the man with his back to Sol. He walked a bit, but then he stopped abruptly. But what the hell? shouted the man in fear and resentment. What the hell? The others were terrified. Sol took advantage of the silence. So, this will happen to each and every one of you if you try to touch her or me. 
You devilish witch, so shouted the man with tears in his eyes. He didn't know that Sul only used a little psychology on him and a little hypnosis, of course. Do not touch me, you lousy bastard, she said it very cold and clearly. Everyone who touch me or her will suffer from incapacity for life. They had gone a few steps closer to Sul and now they stopped a little unsure of what they would do now. She sat so upright in the saddle, her eyes were so yellow. They all felt that the desire was gone. Such a future seemed wise to avoid. Get out of here. She was done with them. Disappear and be thankful that I did do more. I will tell the authorities about this, said one of them. Sul looked sternly at him. I will not do that if I were you. Do it and I castrate you. I can do it without even being close to you. <laughs> you don't scare me. Apparently it was important for him to maintain the prestige of the other soldier. Now crawl around like a dog. To the astonishment of the comrades, the man sank to his knees whining pitifully just like a frightened dog. He crawled on his hands and feet away from her. It became too much for the brave soldiers. Someone shouted, let's go. I think that we stop here for today. Sul is brave. She never hesitates to help someone in need. Nor is she late in punishing anyone who have done something wrong. One wonders if she will ever find the place where the witches used to meet. The days go by and she must hurry, both to meet Skille, but also to return to Norway before Dog does. And leave. What will happen to her if she continues like this? She will either go crazy or fade away. Next on my channel I will look in to the next episode of Fear the Walking Dead. Things left to do. The last episode ended with Jon's death. I saw the episode last night. It was a great episode once again. Then I will continue with Margit Sandemo's book series The Legend of the Ice People. The book stepdaughter, The Abyss. I will pick up exactly where I left Sul, why she uses her gift deep down in the forest of Skåne. Some of my videos are published for a long time, others are removed quite quickly. If you don't want to miss anything or if you just want to support my channel, subscribe and click on the notification bell. I wish you a wonderful day. Thank you so much for stopping by. Stay safe out there and welcome back.